Oh, hello, hello, and welcome. Hi, how you doing? Let me move Hi. my light a little bit. There you go. So you can actually see my face. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. Love the lighting. It's almost angelic. It's amazing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, bit of a halo, wife. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I wish it had the same effect for me. I've got a halo light, but it's, uh, I mean, it hides some of the wrinkles, but I don't quite get that angelic. Oh, shot. man. Well, you know, get yourself a pair of glasses. That'll help reflect everything. <laughs> you can't hide anything with these glasses. I'm telling you. It's like, uh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it just adds more luster, more shine to it. But first off, I wanted to say thank you for joining. How are oh, you? Are you? I, you know, hanging in there. I really, I can't complain. I shouldn't complain. I'm fine. I, you know, just hunkering down in my little apartment in Philly and just trying to ride things out and stay away from dangerous places. I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at. You know, just. I, I'm my, me and this apartment, it's, it's great. I just moved in September. So uh -huh. um, I'm still like unpacking. So that has taken up a lot of my focus and thank God, because it's a wonderful distraction from everything else. So oh, yeah, it's great. That's so good. <laughs> and I loved your response to how are you doing? It's I can't complain, just trying to survive. I love that. Yeah, just, you know, I, you know, <laughs> I know there are people having having a time and I'm really I, I, I should not complain and I will not. So I, I'm good. I'm just trying to stay low, lay low and just enjoy the time, you know, at home. Oh, That's it. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. I am sitting here. I had a full day's work, but I'm in my sweatpants. I think they're joggers. They're like fancy yeah. sweatpants. I also think. in joggers. Yes. Oh, that's become nice. the daily that's the daily uniform now is joggers I, I i don't like dress up anymore it's really bad <laughs> oh i know i know i even have messaging on my shirt that says all day long with a pair of sweatpants so <laughs> <laughs> that is the life well, i'm about right now <laughs> i did i i had to say i my boyfriend did great this christmas because for one of my presents he just got me like a bunch of sweatshirts and i was like yes thank you is it that's all i wanted oh, it's like the christmas <laughs> dream Love yes, it. I was like, I got sweatshirts, <laughs> I got loungewear. Like this is <sighs> my family growing up. We used to call it weekend wear, and so like um, oh. when one or one of my parents would come home from work, or when we would get home from school, the whole thing would be like, I'm changing in my weekend wear, and you know before the weekend. And now it's like this is this is every day. This is daily wear. This is every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh gosh, this is like twenty four yeah. seven wear. God. Yep. Oh, man. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm. I get you. I my wife and I we the same thing, and um, I just sit here working, and then I'm envious of my. I don't know if you could see her, but my little cat. She's just. Oh look at her! Oh my gosh. I That's love all she cats. Does all day. I'm allergic, but I love them. I grew up with cats. I miss them. Oh, I grew so up much. with I grew up with dogs, so I wasn't a cat person. So I was a dog Hi. person. Wife was a cat person. We compromised and got two cats. Just oh. uh, yeah. Uh, as that's you what do. She as you do. Sure. Sure. Ex yeah. Exactly. No, so. we grew up with cats and and when I was in high school, we had two at the same time. That was the first time we ever did that. And it was awesome. I love cats, but it was like, there was like a, a two or three year period where the allergies just kind of developed real fast. And I was like, oh, it's the cats. And now it's like, I don't, if I'm in someone's home, I don't even have to see the cat. I don't even have to know that there is a cat. As soon as I walk in, I'm oh, itching no. and I'm sneezing and I'm like, do you have a cat? And they're like, oh my gosh, we locked her in the basement. We're so sorry. I'm like, yeah, no, it's okay. I'll just go get my, my Claritin and my Flonies and all the <laughs> other stuff. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no. it's oh. bad. And it's so sad because I do, I love cats. They're like the ultimate cuddlers i am a dog person too i because of the allergy now i'm like oh dogs I so see. i do love dogs too but yeah oh, it's nothing man. like snuggling with a cat you know 
Oh yeah, exactly. Oh man, and and we do that now. We, our lunch break, we take naps. Uh, and they just plop on the bed. Although I am yeah. getting a little t- a little uh, uh, contention with one of the cats because she, I'll wake up and she will have moved my head off of my pillow and she'll be sitting uh, on it. And with that, my <laughs> wife, she went for the satin pillows too, the pillowcases that like help with fall of yeah, growth or whatever. Hair, yes. Yeah. Oh no. That's I was ridiculous. so excited. I know I was so excited to use it. And then I wake up and my head's off of it and the cat's just snuggling <laughs> on top of it. It was like a crown on a little pillow. It was amazing, but. That cat <laughs> is the boss. That's hilarious. The cat is the boss. Oh, she is. <laughs> but I, I wanted to, I'll crack into it. I've got a little intro for you. We're in a comedy advice podcast. Okay. So what that means is we're going to talk. I bring my guest. We talk a little bit about them. And then we give some unsolicited advice to questions that are found across the internet that sometimes fans send in. Awesome. So you seem, Liz, I've, I've done my research. You seem like a good advice giver, a source <laughs> of inspiration. Well, uh... <laughs> I don't know. That's really debatable. I think you'd have to ask people, but we're going to go with, yeah, totally good for your advice. <laughs> totally, totally oh. good for your advice. <laughs> oh, awesome. That well, sounds like fun. I'm excited. I'll tell you what, I don't be distracted. I'm going to take this braid out of my hair because it's absolutely driving me insane. So it has nothing to do with you. It's just itching my neck. You know what? Braid, unbraid, whatever you want to do. It, the audio listeners will be none the wiser. The video <laughs> listeners, yes. may, you know, maybe we can just put an ad break in there, but that's fine. I, it looks yeah. cool. Oh, I, thank you. It's just, no. it's, you know, fake hair is fun, but it's itchy. Oh, oh man. Okay, yeah. there we go. Much All better. right. Well, while you continue <laughs> to do that, I will say hello, everybody, and welcome to a comedy advice podcast. My name is Stefan Sitani, and I'm your host. Joining me today, very special guest. She's starring alongside Idris Elba in the movie Concrete Cowboys on Netflix, despite her severe allergies to horses. <laughs> everybody, welcome Liz Priestley. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> oh, thank you for joining. I wanted to, I was saving that little bit for the intro, but I was going to I know, like, I was like, wow, look who's done his research. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was going to mention it when you were talking about your cat That's allergies. Awesome. Oh, but you know what? I, it's good. I know, I know. Well. The allergies, it's insane. But yeah, no, horses too. Horses too. You know, fun fact, my wife, she's from Brazil and she loved animals. They had dogs, they had cats, and- her dad was a truck driver and inside his gas tank, he heard a little thump, thump, thump. It was a little monkey. <gasps> so they adopted it. They, they brought it into their home and they had it until my wife found out she was allergic to it. They could never potty train it and it would pee everywhere. Uh, so they ended up giving it away. But it, from what I heard, it was a little scoundrel. It was very cute because it would just hang in the drapes. Yeah. Yes. And it, it like, would ride, it would like grab the tails of the cats and dogs and just ride them. So oh God, that, that is amazing. I don't even care if I was allergic to monkeys. I would just keep it. I would be like, <laughs> I'm putting it up. At, like, give me the Flonase. Give me all of the Benadryl. Like all of it. I am keeping this monkey because how awesome <laughs> is that? Like, Dude, oh. so cool. She gets, yeah, she gets that tail. She gets to say, I had a monkey. She yeah. she also, by the way, you might need contacts for it though, because her mom wore glasses and this monkey did not like glasses. So she <laughs> hop over, hop on the shoulder, <laughs> grab the glasses off the face and throw them on the ground. Wow, okay, yeah, babies do that too. Oh, babies do good that point. to me too. And good I don't point. normally wear glasses. I actually normally wear contacts. I'm being very, this is going with the weekend wear. I have been too lazy to put the contacts in. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, glasses. Seems like a glasses kind of day. Yep. <laughs> and um, so that, this is just the result of my pure laziness. And, uh, but yes, babies will snatch your glasses as well. In my experience, they really, it's like jewelry. They want to go for whatever's shiny and then they just kind of, they get their hands on it and they go, well, that's nice. And then they just throw it. They don't return it to you. Like they just go, eh. wow. and you're like, well, I, 
now I can't see you or where they're landed. Thanks so much. That's what I try to do with people as well. Cause I, you know, if I want them to not see my flaws and wrinkles, I grab <laughs> the glasses. Like, no, 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 no. You get to see it me is, in blurred vision. It's a very <laughs> useful tactic. I'm, I will say it's, it's annoying, but it's a useful tactic. No, I, it's, it's funny, but yeah, babies love the shiny stuff. And you're just like, oh, 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 okay. No, oh, try to move their head. <laughs> out of their hand reach and just, hey okay you know but i feel yeah. like i might i might develop a defense mechanism when i have a <laughs> child just, hey hey how's it going yes you kind of move them up and what you get you distract them with the woo up in the air <laughs> for a minute and then they kind of go oh right this is fun shiny stuff is boring for like a minute <laughs> Oh, man, that is amazing. And speaking of babies, you were once a baby, and we're here to talk about the amazing Liz Priestley. Wasn't that a great transition? Beautiful transition. Maybe one of my worst. <laughs> you were once a baby? I'm like, I was. <laughs> I wasn't sure where that was going, but that was that was beautiful. I like it, actually. <laughs> Oh man. And you know, to put to put on our historic glasses to be able to see your life a little more clearly. Wanted to talk about you because you've got an amazing life. You started out, you're an amazing actress, first off. And I want to dig into that. But before we do, let's excavate over on this side in your youth. You were yeah. you, you didn't start out as an actor, you started <laughs> off as a musician and in music, which is amazing. How did the spark, how did the um that bug bite you to get uh, into so music? You know, I have to say, I, I do think I started as an actor first, at least the passion was there first, because okay, okay. do you know how like you're in elementary school and they make you do class plays and they're really, you know, it's like you and your whole kindergarten class standing up there and singing like five nursery rhyme songs and that's it. Yes. To me, that was a serious performance. You know what I mean? Like in kindergarten, I was like, don't mess this up. Like we must be in line, like, you know, it uh -huh, was serious. Uh -huh. And then I remember like, even as far back as like second grade, um, we were gonna put on a class play and we had auditions for the parts. And uh -huh, I uh -huh. was like, I want this part. I wanna play this part. And then I auditioned and I didn't get it. And I went home and cried my eyes out. And my mother was like, this is not a big deal. <laughs> like, like <laughs> this is not the thing <laughs> to be upset about. <laughs> um, but, you know, I remember even then being like, no, this is so serious because I, you know, as far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be the center of attention, which is so selfish, but it's the truth. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so, and then because of that, music sort of followed. And so even though I knew I wanted to be the center of attention, it was, um, you know, in any way that I could do that. So yeah, there were school plays, but then yeah, music came. And so I had older siblings, they all played instruments. And mm. when I was four, my mom asked me, you know, do you want to do it too? And I was like, yeah, like they give concerts, people get to watch that, like, yes, you know? Nice. Um, so I started How many playing siblings violin. did you have, by the way? Sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, you're fine. I have five sisters, actually. Oh yeah. man, I've got Two brothers and two sisters. So I'm just ah, one okay. So you know you. The, the full house. Yeah. And, oh. you know, house full of women. It's it's a fun time, you know. Um, <laughs> it's a good time. No, it was it was cool because, you know, um, when I was a baby, uh, uh -huh. no, I was adopted as an infant. So it was it was a really cool uh environment for me to be in also, not just being in a house full of women, which is wonderful, but uh -huh. you know, I had three older sisters who are ca Caucasian and I have a uh -huh. younger sister who's black and a younger sister who's biracial and my parents are Caucasian. So, you uh -huh. know, it was, it was a really cool environment to grow up in. Um, wow. Yeah, it was awesome. My parents really worked to, you know, with everything else that I was, that I was into, you know, music and acting and everything else, they really did try to also have me just embrace, you know, the African-American side of me. Like uh -huh, um, uh -huh. my mom learned how to like cornrow hair and she did all of our, you know, hair, everybody's Aww. in the neighborhood. And, you know, like it was, I, I, I used to tell people, my sister and I were doing the Venus and Serena, the 
cornrows with the beads well before you ever saw Zen Venus and Serena. So like, <laughs> I had that going on, that Stevie Wonder type hair thing going on for a few years. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, trendsetters. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> yes. It was awesome. It was really fun. And then, so yeah, into that, I started playing violin uh -huh. at four. I still play. Um, I don't take lessons, of course, but I still play. I've had to busted out at some auditions and things. So yeah, I still play. It's just hilarious. Now, um, did your did your older siblings, did they also play violin or were they different? One of my, one of them did. Um, so okay. they all played uh, cello, violin and viola respectively. And then I began violin and my younger sister began cello and then the youngest uh, played trumpet. But we also all played different instruments too. Like my my sister who played the cello also played piano and so did the violinist. The violinist also took voice lessons. And when I was a teenager and was like, I don't wanna take violin lessons anymore. Um, and my parents were like, you have, you have real musical talent, so you should keep doing that. Mm -hmm. It was because of her that I chose singing because I was like, well, she did that. I'll do that too, you know? Um, oh, so we all kind of played different things. I play piano as well. Um, I can play all the string instruments now because of them, you know, because we got to kind of learn all of ours. And then, you know, the cool thing too was that my mom would come to every single lesson for each of us and learn and bring her own instruments. So whether it was a cello, a viola or a violin, and learn how to play it with us so that at home she could practice with us. So my mom was taking oh, lessons too. So yeah, that's it, was, so smart. it was awesome. It was awesome. It was, you know, I played in orchestras. We played in group class. We, I got to do a concert with, you know, several concerts actually with the Philadelphia Orchestra. Um, their members gave lessons and I used to take lessons from them. So it was, it was wow. really cool. It was really I, cool. I, I, I really hope there was some sort of priestly soundtrack or something. Yeah. When I was like, dinner's ready. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there probably should have been at some point. We used to play weddings. My siblings and I we used to play weddings. Um, yeah, we were like a little chamber group. And, oh. you know, I'm sure someone has us on video somewhere playing. Um, Amazing. The only one of us that I think has an album truly is my dad, who is also a uh, vocalist. And in his, you know, later years, he's been uh, he's been really into like the karaoke type stuff. So he's got like mm -hmm. a whole studio at home with like the mic and like the tracks and all the thing. And he finds these beautiful vocal tracks of old like jazz standards and contemporary beautiful like things and he just wow. records songs and he just sends them to me i have about 700 of them that is not even an exaggeration i put a bunch of them on an album a few years ago and there were 50 that i put oh, on this album <laughs> that was probably like six or seven years ago so yeah he he's got a lot of songs out there but he yeah he's a singer um wow wow yeah we used to joke he and my mom's a piano player we used to joke that my parents my dad used to sing at a lot of weddings when I was growing uh -huh. up. And I used to, you know, run up to him, pull him on the pant, like, dad, 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 can I sing with you? Dad, can I sing, can I sing here? And he'd be like, get up, come on, come on, I'm practicing, get away, come on, come on, come on. And then somewhere in high school, it flipped because I started singing at weddings and he would come in and Liz, Liz, let me sing with you on a duet on this one. Liz, come on, let me sing with you. And I'd be like, dad. <laughs> go away i'm practicing dad come on dad i'm practicing i'm practicing you know uh oh. but yeah we we all we were all musicians at one point and uh, i, so I hope you guys that i followed so i hope you guys fought oh i was just gonna say i hope you guys fought singing too like clean up the <laughs> dishes liz no i will not <laughs> this sounds like such a cool I family did. <laughs> probably did because I was the musical theater one. I was the musical theater nerd growing up. So yeah, I probably did a fair amount of that. My daughter, I have a 13 year old daughter. She frequently points out to me now that uh -huh. when I say things, I'll say something and then I will say the exact same thing again, a second later, but I will sing it. So I'll be like, can you go clean your room? Can you go clean your room? <laughs> and she'll just be like, mom. I'll be like, all right, I'm going downstairs. 
go downstairs. And she'll be like, what? <laughs> That's amazing. So I'm I'm pretty certain uh, at some point I was probably like, I'm going to slap your face. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Get out of my room. Oh. Like, didn't I tell you once? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh. goodness. Um, amazing. Amazing. So <laughs> I was going to say, too, you just talked about musical theater. So you ended up. I think you, well, I'll let you tell it, but I know that you went to the College of Ithaca for musical theater. Yeah, at that yeah, I did. point. Yeah, ahead, you sir. know, I, I, so I knew I wanted to be an actor from like when I was seven. There was something nice. about like the process of movie making that I just was like, that is amazing. Like that was around the age I found out you can make a living playing pretend and get paid for it. And you can pretend to be different people throughout history. I was like, yes that's the job for me, where do I, how do that? You know, and then I started doing um, like as many plays as I could in high school and, and, and in the community and everything. But I knew that's what I wanted to do. Um, but, you know, separate from that, my parents were like, hey, music. And I was like, ah, you know, so <laughs> college came and I thought, let's compromise and I will go for musical theater because I thought I'll get the, I'll get the most well-rounded training maybe I can use music to get my foot in the door to the acting. That was always the plan. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, so I, I, I went to Ithaca. I loved it there. The program was super, super intense, um, but I made it through because they, they can, they can cut you, <clears throat> excuse me, during the first two years, they can cut you um, oh. at any time. Yeah. If I, they don't I, think that you're up to snuff. So <laughs> I would be so nervous for the first two yeah. years. That's crazy. Oh it my was, gosh. It was, it was insane. And the whole first two years, um, they give you like a status and they basically kept me on probationary status for the entire <gasps> years, which is like a step away from, okay, we're kicking you out, you know? And the, my final review session, I sat with my advisor and he's like, you know, you congratulations were, you know, it's like, why did you keep me on probation this whole time? And he's like, because we realized early on that you are the kind of actor that if we said you're great, you would just stop working. So we needed to push you. And I was like, you're absolutely right. That is absolutely right. Because as soon as they said, oh, you're great. I would have been like, I'm great. I don't need to do anything. Like, <laughs> I would have done anything. <laughs> you were absolutely right. They kept me scared for two years. I was on edge. I was calling my parents like every weekend, can I please come home? And they were like, absolutely not. Like you need to stay. And I'm so glad oh my gosh. that I did. But yeah, the training was great. And I was there and then I graduated and mm -hmm. I moved mm -hmm. with most of my class to New York City. And I started being an actor. That was the beginning of all of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. How amazingly Jeez, frightening. Ugh, it's ugh, dust from unpacking. That's another fun allergy. You know what else is a fun allergy? Fresh cut grass. The summertime is horrifying for me. Oh, that and no. leaves that have fallen. So the fall is another fun time for me. Yeah, there's like a chemical that fallen leaves apparently give off. I know I'm going off on a tangent, but no, 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 it's they, okay. The last I, I don't actually understand those things because I live in the desert, so we've got oh like cacti, oh. sc scorpions. If you talk about scorpions, like a wow, know. scorpions, you have to deal with scorpions all day. I have to check my slippers for scorpion. Oh, are wait. you serious? There was, yep. Hold on one sec. Die! Oh my god! <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, wait. That is crazy to me because you know, I the dream of mine, of course, is always to been to to live on the West Coast. But scorpions is not they're not something I'm prepared to deal with yet. Like what? What? I've lived, I've lived in Arizona. I lived on the East Coast in in Jersey, and I worked in the city for mm. eight years. But okay. other than that, I was in Arizona. I think I've seen maybe one two scorpions in my entire life 
That's still too many. Oh, so, oh, I know. Yeah, they're they're mean. They're mean little dudes. Yeah, but they look, they're they're so tiny. It's almost like they're toys, and then you can just stomp on them. But they are they're so menacing because they've got the. If you see a spider, the spider's like, "Hey, dude!" But the scorpion, because it's got its legs on the ground, but then the scorpion's immediate, just like, "Yo, yo, how much you lift, bro?" Oh. Yeah. It's bad. Okay, it's got its no. Stinger, just ready for you. Yeah, it wouldn't matter how small it is. If I saw one, it would be. I and I'm so ashamed of this. I would immediately call for my boyfriend and be like, "You need to come over here immediately and dispose of this thing. I will not go near it. <laughs> like I will trap it under a box until it's, you get here." <laughs> it's <laughs> terrifying. But you know what? The bright side is that you won't see them during the day because they manif- they they just crawl out at night when you can't see. So you don't even oh, have like to worry roaches. about them. Yeah, exactly. That's so worse. If you, if you put on a black light though, they all glow in the dark. So it's really cool. Yeah. So anyway, so you we were, <laughs> we were talking about allergies and uh, <laughs> Arizona is a beautiful place to live. Okay. Lovely. Anything oh. though. My aunt and uncle live out there, so yes, I I, I hear that. But okay, if you say so. Don't no, don't worry. Scorpions are nothing compared to the deadly rattlesnakes that we've got out here. So it's the least of your worries. I don't think I'll be living in Arizona. Is what I'm thinking. Maybe Arizona is a fun place to visit. I will visit. <laughs> I will visit temporarily and not put my feet on the ground. Yes. I, exactly. Just wear, yes. have one of those hoverboards or bicycles. Yes. Make sure. Magic oh, carpet. Uh, no, I would kill myself on a hoverboard. I, <laughs> I don't know how people are not just like falling off them constantly. Like I don't, the, the mechanics of a hoverboard, it, I don't understand it. So I would have to just have someone carry me, which is worse. <sighs> that, hey, you know what? If, if the boyfriend, just have him carry you, pick Listen, you back all the time. That's, that's how fine. it's going to have to be because I don't, you have talked me out of walking in Arizona. Whew. Just never take off your shoes and you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll be great. Steel toed things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <exactly>. uh, <laughs> what were we talking about? I'm so sorry. <laughs> we, were ta- <laughs> we were talking about you just finished graduating <laughs> from the College of Ithaca. You went to New York to become. Oh, yes an actor yeah well yeah I you know I was lucky that I got to be a working actor in New York because not a lot of people get to say I I didn't quite make it to Broadway but I I got called in several times for a couple Broadway uh auditions that was cool I remember I got called in for the color purple on Broadway and uh I was sitting in the waiting room waiting for them to call me and word had just come out that the show was closing as I was sitting in the room. And I was like, uh, uh. (laughs) So yeah, that was fun. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, I I had a couple uh, Broadway auditions that was really fun. And uh, and then I worked at some other theaters, I would say off, off, off Broadway, sure. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was cool. I didn't, you know, I didn't have any other separate jobs. I was just acting and then I got a national tour and I got to tour the country for six months which was so cool and it was a musical so you know singing and dancing and you know doing the whole thing it was awesome traveling was cool I think all actors should have to do tour life for at least six months um that is so cool so did yeah you end it up... really go I'm ahead, sorry oh no I'm just saying it really it really teaches you um the appreciation, not just of being the actor where you have those days where you really, are, you're like, I don't feel like getting out of this bed and putting on a show. You know what I mean? But you got to yeah. pull yourself up by the bootstraps and find that energy and deliver a great show because people paid that money. But yeah. it's great. It was a kid's show. So I love um, children's theater. I think all actors should have to do a bit of children's theater. Touring life is really fun and we were the kind of tour where we had to put up our own set and take it down. My boyfriend is also an actor and he did a tour. He actually played um, Big Bird on uh, Sesame Street Live. No. And there, yes, yes. He, he's on YouTube. You can see clips of him on YouTube. It's really funny. He's really tall. So he his tour, you know, was like a massive tour where you have like a crew that puts up 
your set and you have a lighting crew and a sound crew and you've got like a whole, you know, and they uh-huh. flew to every city. My tour was, we had three, you know, Dodge Sprinter vans, <laughs> one of which held our entire set. <laughs> and we drove from city to city and we had, you know, you had like a track as as a performer like you played these three parts and i also knew i was in charge of this part of the set that i had to put up and take mm-hmm. down at mm-hmm. a certain part of the show and you know it was very organized it was really cool i think all actors should have to do it and then you know i was in like i was seeing places like flint michigan um i was in chicago uh it was they were in the super bowl that year um so this would have been what, 2006, 2007, something like that. I don't know. I'm not great on years, but they were in the Super Bowl that year because the hotel we were in, they were like, after the show, when you come back to the hotel, you are not allowed to leave the hotel. And I was like, why? And they were like, Super Bowl, there may be rioting in the streets. I'm like, what? And sure enough, I was in the hotel. And you could hear them outside just, and oh I think my. they won. I think they won. So, yeah. but you could hear them, you know, and they were like, do not leave the hotel, you know. Um, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was a it was a fun trip. It was really cool. Oh and my then, god. Uh, after that, I moved back home to Philly and I had my, my kid. And I've kind oh. of been here ever since. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love Philly. I've only been there once or twice, but the last time we went, my wife and I, we got word that I got a job here in Phoenix. So we were going to move from Oh, wow. From New yeah. We ended up That's taking a little road trip. Live, by the way, in Phoenix. So. Oh, nice. Yes. Okay. okay. Hi, Uncle Knott. I call him Uncle Knott. His name is Uncle Art. But when I was little, I couldn't pronounce it. So hi, Uncle Knott. Oh, Uncle Not. Uncle Not. Liz says hi. No, I'm just kidding. We don't live together. We're not that close. But no, we live, um, <laughs> we, we lived in Elizabeth, New Jersey hour away hey, from great Philly. name yeah yeah and we ended, up, <laughs> we ended up going to philadelphia and uh it was a beautiful it's just like a tiny little new york it's so cute yeah. historic it was also saint patrick's day so people were oh. up as leprechauns <laughs> and super drunk yeah. so that was fun Philly um, knows I, how to party for a St. Patrick's Day, I will say. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. yes. It was like three in the afternoon, and my wife and I were taking a picture by the love stand. Oh, yeah, sign by the love sign. Yeah. And then there were there were just like five guys also there that were just <laughs> like one was humping me in the picture and everything. And I was just like, all right, Philly experience. This is great. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we, you know, Philly, we like to have a good time, man. It's, <laughs> it's <laughs> you know, we get a lot of hate. We get a lot of hate because of our sports fans, I think. But uh, we have a good time. We have a good time. Oh, I don't know why we threw it. snowballs at Santa. I don't claim that I was not there. I don't even know if I was alive. I, I was alive. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the rest of it we're pretty good guys we, we, we have a good time that's oh, awesome yeah, yeah i you know i'm in and out of uh jersey and new york a lot so i'm i'm familiar with elizabeth new jersey but yeah nice, it's nice. you know it's nice it's a hop skip and a jump away from new york so i am in new york a lot which is why i've stayed in philly because my family's here um mm-hmm. I'm a train ride away from New York and also from, you know, DC and, you know, Baltimore or, you know, wherever that I've found work, I've not really had to leave my home yet to do it. Um, Like I said, the dream is one day to make it to the West coast and now's not really a good time to do that. So I guess I'm going to stay in Philly for a little longer. It seems like, (laughs) you know what? That's I love the West coast. I love Arizona, but the East coast will always have a a nice crowded, polluted place in my heart. Because it's just (laughs) so beautiful. It's, 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 you know, I, I like the people. I like the thing. There's so much to do. It's just never a dull moment. And I, yes, Enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy and, it. I know you are. And we have but. seasons, and we have seasons, which I per I'm personally I'm over, but you know I'm glad we have them. I'm ready to move to a place where it's just mild all year. Uh, but no, I you know, ever like I said, ever since I was a kid, L.A. was always kind of like 
the dream. Like someday I will go to LA. And I, I think I will at some point, but, and now mm. that, you know, this movie is coming out, hopefully that will, uh, you know, push things in that direction. But mm. I'll tell you, when I shot this movie, it was pre pandemic. So this has been really like a bummer in so many ways. Um, and again, I don't want to complain because I have my health, I have my home and I have the mm -hmm. ability to still audition and everything, but it has been such a bummer because the joke was when we were shooting the movie, um, you know, Hey Liz, aren't you excited? Your parents are going to get to go in a theater and see your face up there. And I would joke back and say, Oh my God, you guys, you know, <laughs> knowing my luck, I'm probably going to end up on Netflix or something. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> My newbie's coming out on Netflix. <laughs> no, yeah, lo and behold, here we come, Netflix. Oh, well, hey, Netflix is not a bad place. Not to be. at all. And not you know, bad. I when the pandemic did start, you know, kind of hit, mm -hmm. and and we knew that the movie industry would also be affected, like everyone else's. That was the first thing I said was, oh my gosh, I hope we end up on Netflix because, you know, Idris Elba, who plays my husband in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and just throwing that out there. I love, I love bragging about that. Um, <laughs> no, he, you know, he has a great working relationship with Netflix. A lot of his projects are on Netflix. So nice. when that happened, that was the first thing I said. I was like, oh my God, we might be on Netflix. And I got immediately excited because everyone's home and everyone has Netflix. Everyone has Netflix. I was like, this is going to be awesome. So oh, I'm happy. I'm I, happy. I'm, I'm excited too. I'm going <laughs> to, I've got Netflix. I'm here at home. I can watch you with my joggers and my sweatpants joggers. and or my, my shirt. So I'm so like, happy. With a cocktail. This is going to be oh. amazing. I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to be like, I might organize like some zoom parties so we can all watch it together. I'm just going to have like different people. I think I'll just do a week, like a five day, five or six days where you can just sign up whatever night you want and we'll I watch love the movie that. together. Yeah. That's awesome. I, you know, I think so. I, you know, the, 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 interesting thing about this pandemic is the technologies that have come out of this and allowed us to still keep in touch zoom is an yeah. it is amazing feature like this is amazing i have coffee dates with friends over zoom that i can't see normally so i said to them like hey i'll meet you at 9 a.m tomorrow on zoom and we get on we'll sit there with our coffee and be like so how's your day going <laughs> you know yeah um, yeah 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 i it's ended up thing. we do that with my family we all get together i ended up buying the pro version so we get longer than 40 minutes but now oh, I, would, yes. I I think zoom would make more money if they charged you to only have 40 minutes because to only have 40 trying minutes, to get yeah. my parents to get the video and the audio set up <laughs> and then my brothers to be able to pay attention it's just a whole ordeal so I'm like yeah oh holidays forget it with all of my family and then we all have kids so you know it's like 20 of us on there and the whole time it's you know my mom and dad just in the background going who's who's talking can you <laughs> yeah. can you see me can you yeah. see can you see your father get in here get in george get in here can you see your father <laughs> who's talking and we're all just sitting there like I love it. I know. And then their <laughs> face is so close to the camera. It's just their eyeball. And they're like, like hello? It's, it's like Why can't I see face. anything? It's a half a face. It's a quarter of the face. And they're just, can you see me? Yes. Back up oh. a little. <laughs> so, so funny. Oh. Or somebody's always on a delay. And you're just sitting there like. I know. Did you, did you hear what I said? Oh, did you hear what I said, mom? Did you? Did you hear? Did oh you hear what God. I said? <laughs> <laughs> I remember and the last whole time week. Mom's going. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's it? How? <laughs> Live. <laughs> oh my gosh! That I know. Was, last last was. week it. It was my mom's birthday and we were trying to get a Zoom call together to sing happy birthday to her. And then by the, <laughs> it was like 20 minutes in and I'm like, mom, 
hit the video button. What are you doing? Ah! And then we're like, happy <laughs> birthday. Oh <my> <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's like on Christmas, we said, we're going to get on at four o'clock for the Zoom call. And it's like, for the three hours prior, I'm getting text messages. Do we agree on a time? I thought we said four. I thought it was two. I'm not going to be ready by four. Can we get on at four? So it's four o'clock, not the time. No, it's still four. Well, I can't get on at four. Wait, didn't we say two? How about I just turn I my camera on and when you come into frame, you just, Liz! And I'll that's, turn the camera around. <laughs> that, oh God, exactly. Yes, it's that's so the way. Ridiculous. Oh, Zoom drama. It's uh, You thought there wasn't enough drama in the world. Now it's Zoom drama. That's Zoom drama i'll take it over all the other drama i'll take the zoom Ex drama yes you know. same, same. but <laughs> because it's at so the end of the day you can always just hit you know what guys i i gotta i gotta i gotta go i gotta i love you leave yeah. <laughs> bye <laughs> exactly oh god but it's so interesting how things have worked and i know i was hearing another podcast that you were on where you were saying that you even for you did a lot of commercial work mm -hmm. and you ended up flying to Uruguay yeah. for <laughs> a I, commercial. You know, I only did, I've only done um, three commercials uh, prior to this film. And then, mm -hmm. is that it? Yeah, I think one more since then. So, okay. um, but yeah, they, it's for, uh, it's for Safe Auto. And we were supposed to be doubling for New York. And I, because I remember the audition was in New York and I went up there and I did this thing, <clears throat> excuse me. And, and it was so funny because normally you can kind of see who's up for the same part as you because they either, you know, same height, they kind of got the same hue or whatever. Uh -huh. um, so you can kind of be like, oh, okay. I remember I've walked into that room and being like, nobody here looks like me and nobody looks like each other. So like, what is going on? You know what I mean? Oh, wow. um, and I, I did this audition. I played a cop and uh -huh. it's, it's, I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know if they play it in Arizona, but you know, it's three, three uh, construction workers putting up signs for safe auto and they're kind of yelling at each other. Cause one of them's real high up. And they basically I have say, seen this commercial. Yeah, yeah. And then the went the guy's like, Oh, good, you don't have to drive illegally like you did today. And he's like, Hey, shut up, that cop might hear you. And I walk in and I'm like, Come on, Daddy, son, you know. And I remember at the audition being like, I, I said it, and the guy laughed, and I was just kind of like, I think I just got that part. You just get yeah, a feeling with certain uh -huh. ones, you know what I mean? I was like, I think I just got this. And um, I got a call back. And at the callback, they said, do you have a passport? I'm like, I, yeah, I, I do. And I had just gotten my passport oh. because I lost out on a job that was supposed to shoot in Canada that was supposed to pay 10 grand. And my manager goes, so send me a copy of your passport. And I go, oh, I, I, I don't have a passport. Is that? And she was like, oh, no. Okay. <laughs> so I lost out on that. So I made sure to get one right after that. So I had just gotten nice. it like two days before. And he's like, do you have a passport? I said, yeah. He said, good. Um, it's really expensive to shoot in New York. So we're going to double for New York in South America. I was like, excuse me? <laughs> so, uh, so then like a couple days after that, I got the part. And they send me, you know, an itinerary, which is, I mean, that was the trippiest thing. And uh -huh. um, they're like, you know, uh, you know, next Friday, we're going to send a car, town car to your apartment to pick you up, take you to the airport. You're going to get on this flight and we're shooting in Uruguay and you're going to be there for three days, all expenses paid. <laughs> like it was the craziest. And then, so I did a little bit of research before I went and turns out Uruguay is known for their steak. Like they have some of the best steaks in the world. I said, oh, okay. So when I went there, you know, we did, we shot for the day. And then after we were going to go to dinner and I was like, we got to find a restaurant where they sell steak. Nice. I don't know what they're feeding their cows or whatever over there. We need to find out immediately because <laughs> that steak, it was like, you cut into it, you uh -huh. put it in uh -huh. your mouth and it would melt. It was amazing. Uh -huh. Uh, amazing and the wine and then 
we had this fantastic, you know, we went through, it was me and the, the three other actors that were there. So we went through a couple bottles of wine. We each had steaks. We each had, you know, they have these amazing sides and everything. We get the bill and it was basically the equivalent of like $40. <laughs> Oh my! It was God. like what you know. Um, of course, there the the it's it's dollars, but it's different. And so when uh-huh. you first get it, it says eight hundred dollars, and I was like, Ooh! and then you do the conversion, and it's like, oh, an American, that's like forty bucks. I was oh, like, that's nice. ridiculous, ridiculous. I, I wonder what they do. You know what? Our Americans, our cows are probably so stressed by the time it gets to your plate. The cow's probably been through three divorces. It's like, oh God. I don't know what they're doing. They must be, you know, tender. I don't know, massaging these cows or something, but it was so good. It was so good. I want to go back just for that. But the people were Uh, lovely. The people were lovely. I mean, and it was so funny because the day I arrived, it was 82 degrees. Mm-hmm. And I was standing there and we were waiting for the transport back to the hotel from the set. And I'm standing there, I'm just baking. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> like, it was so hot. And the next day is 51 degrees and overcast and rainy. Wow. And all the I I the commercial is me and three gentlemen, and all of the guys lost their voices by the end of the day from all the screaming in the cold oh, weather. Oh geez. But because of my opera background, I did not lose my voice. And so by the end of the day, I'm going, he said he needs a cup of tea. Can, he said he wants, can, he needs two sugars and a lemon. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, but yeah, we were all screaming. It was, it was a miserable day to actually shoot, which was so disappointing because the day we got there was so amazingly lovely. But I loved it there. It was incredible. And I just couldn't believe you know, it was cheaper for them to fly in three actors who were from New York, me from Philadelphia, our director who was Finnish, um, the crew was Italian, and the extras were Argentinian. So to fly all of us to Uruguay was somehow cheaper than us in New York. I was like, oh. I don't know. I don't even know how that's possible, but sure. <laughs> that's amazing. And it, it looked like New York, too. It did not look... When I saw the commercial, I was like, this does not look like Uruguay to me. It was just so. a middle, you know, just a street in the middle of downtown. Um, I forget the name of the city, but it was a beautiful city, too. Um, wow. but yeah, I mean, it looked like, you know, somewhere down in like, I don't know, like the garment district or something. Like, it, uh-huh. it looked like a corner in New York. And I was yeah. just like, this is crazy. This is nuts. But yeah. That's amazing. That's yeah, really cool. It was awesome. And I was gonna, uh, be- right before we get into your movie, then we'll get into the advice. I wanted to also say you were almost a part of the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe too. Yes, well, I got I cast in uh, in Jessica Jones. I was gonna be on the episode, um, season three. I can't remember the episode number, but it was like Trish has uh-huh. has gone away after the death of someone i don't want to spoil for people who haven't watched it. Oh, no, you're late <laughs> but you know um death of her mother i'll say that and she comes back and there was a scene where she came back to the talk show and i was like the head of craft services <laughs> on the talk <laughs> show and it was awesome i had a craft service table it was all uh-huh. fake food and it looked real and everyone would try to come over between takes and start trying to eat it. And they'd be like, oh, it's styrofoam. And I'd be like, yeah, put it down. You know what I mean? Um, that <laughs> happened several times. It was great. But I had a whole scene with with uh, Rachel Taylor and, wow. you know, where she actually spoke to me. I spoke to her and everything. And we filmed it. I met her. I briefly, briefly met Kristen Ritter. Wow. And then they cut my scene for time. So I, did, I didn't end up being in it actually, but they, but they were so sweet. They called me and they said, you know, we're so sorry we had to cut you, but you know, the great thing is you can still be a part of the MCU. I was like, Oh, does that just, Oh, okay. Cause now, now the black Panther is a thing. I want to, I want to be part of the Dora Milaje. Thank you very much. Shave uh, my yeah. head, shave That's- my head. <laughs> Yeah, I want to be on that. Oh my gosh! Like, where do I where do I sign up for that? Oh man, that's that's. Yeah. I, I mean, bittersweet. I would say sweeter yes. that that you know what? As you continue to rise, here we come. Black it's Pan- all good. It's all good. 
said, my attitude is always if you get cut from something or if you don't get cast in something, it's because something bigger and better is yes. around the corner. So, and for me, that absolutely was true. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was a bummer because I told so many people about it and then I had to tell all those people, oh, I'm not going to be in it. Sorry. Not, not mm. going to, not going to be in it. Yeah, but, you know. It, oh, it is what it is. Exactly. Oh, and better things yes. are coming. Spe and speaking of better things, <laughs> Concrete Cowboys. Amazing. Concrete Cowboys. I, I wanted to take just a little bit of time to talk about it. And I wanted to talk about the amazing approach you took in your audition to get the part. And oh my I think I was in, I got little goose pimples when I heard the story. So I think that my <laughs> audience would also get goose pimples. So we're just going to spread pimples everywhere but spread pimples <laughs> spreading pimples everywhere the it's pimple spreader yes it's better than I... corona <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know oh man the the preparation process is something i i alternate between being proud of and also being embarrassed by because it's i went so method on this and i'm not someone who considers herself a method actress and really method kind of has a misnomer. We all kind of think of like Daniel Day Lewis as method as, you know, like if he's going to be in the, the last of the Mohicans, he's going to learn how to carve out a canoe and sew moccasins and do the whole, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like we all think of that as method and, um, and it is, but it's not always that intense, but for this, yes, I, because for the audition, the part that I play, um, so I play Cole's mother who basically sets in motion the, the events of this movie um, because he's he's acting up at school. We're from Detroit and mm. he's gotten kicked out of like his third school in a year. And I'm just like, I, I can't do anything more for you. You know, like I, I'm a single parent. I've done everything I can. I'm at the end of my rope. You're, I'm taking you to your dad in Philly and I basically dump him on his dad's doorstep, which is, you know, not great. But <laughs> at the time for the audition, my character was written in, in a much different way than she ends up in the movie. And I'm very glad that they did away with a lot of these extra things. But nice. at the time she was written as a drug addict the scene that I was gonna audition for was um, I was being evicted from my apartment. It was like a scene with a cop where he's basically like, you got 10 minutes to go in there and grab your stuff and let's go, you know? And I'm, you know, pleading with him type of thing. I think I was going to rehab. I think that was in there too. So oh, okay. she was really written as a very down and out. In, in the script, it said um, his mother looks like she's lived a hard life. And I, was like, I, I immediately pounced on that because, um, and again, at my first audition, I didn't know how big this movie was. They didn't tell me anything about Idris Elba and I hadn't heard anything about him at that point. So mm -hmm. um, I'm just thinking this is just a local movie that's you know filming, but I had seen the casting director several times and I really wanted to show her that I could play something serious because she kept calling me in for these, I call them Walmart moms. You know, those commercials where it's like, who is ready for school? And like, <laughs> I want to, I want to do something meaty here, you know? Yes, so my focus yes. was like, I just want the director, the casting person to see that, oh, we can call Liz in for drama, you know? So I called my agent or my manager and I said, you know, is it all right if I do a little, hmm? and she's like, yeah, go for it. So I did, I, so I, I got the notice that my audition was going to be on a Monday on a Friday, right? So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday into Monday, I stayed up for 72 hours straight. <laughs> I, I was like, she's exhausted. She's at the end of her rope. She's crying. She's, you know, sh I need to show them that I am exhausted at the end of my rope. So I stayed up for three days straight, which I would not recommend to anyone. Oh my um, God. I don't know yeah. how you did. I, oh, I can't stay awake for 12 hours. <laughs> it was crazy. so much coffee because also caffeine makes you jittery. So I had yeah. so much coffee, like so much coffee, uh, which then like made my nerves, you know, super. And so, and then, um, I would run the scene over and over and over and over again. And I would cry and I would journal. Um, 
I did yeah. other things that I'm not gonna say. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, but by the time, and I was happy because my audition was like 10 a.m. Monday morning. And I was like, good, because I can't, if it's like Monday afternoon, I'm not gonna make it, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And the way down to the audition, I'm like smoking cigarettes. I'm not a smoker in life, but for this, I did. Uh, wow. But I, yeah, I'm smoking cigarettes, like chain smoking in the car. It's the only time I've ever smoked. I, yeah. Damn. Yeah. And so I was real jittery, had so much coffee. I had made these recordings of what I had journaled and I was playing the audio in the car and I was crying. So by the time I got to the audition, I was just a wreck. And I had also used some makeup to really emphasize like the circles under my eyes. I put like real dark makeup on under the circles and I had like, um, like a scarf on my head. I didn't even do my hair, which girls, if you, I mean, you know, black women, you know, if we don't do our hair, like my hair was not done. <laughs> and I had like holes in my clothes. I mean, I looked trashy. I've never looked like that at an audition. And I walk in and I'm, I'm like that Viola Davis, like snot crying. Um, Damn. Damn. Yeah. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm crying and they call me in and I'm still crying and I do my scene and I cry through the whole thing. And, uh, you know, and then I left and immediately got in my car and stopped crying. And then like went to the store and just like bought so much water. I was like, ah, and went to bed. Um, but yeah, and then I got a call back and it was so funny because they called me back on a Friday and they said, you know, your call back is on Monday. So I did the same thing a second no. time I did a yeah I did the, because that at that point I was like oh my gosh I have to do what I did because they obviously liked it They're like it worked so, yeah so I stayed up another weekend straight and did the whole thing again um and went back in a second time and did it and left and at that point I did know about Idris because once I got the call back, I was like, let me do a little digging. And I found mm -hmm. out, you know, oh my goodness, cowboy movie shot in Philadelphia, Idris Elba. And I'm like, well, he's obviously not playing my 15 year old son. I think he's playing the dad. Like, I think this is the mother of, you know, of the kid. And I immediately wrote myself out of the role. I thought, huh, there's no way that they're going to cast someone who has no film credits in this role to be opposite Idris Elba. And at that point he had been announced and Caleb McLaughlin had been announced. So I thought there's no way that someone who's never been in a movie is gonna be Idris Elba's wife or Caleb McLaughlin's mother. So I thought maybe the best I could do is get cast as a stand-in for like Kerry Washington or something, um, which I would have done wow. gladly. I just wanted them to see that. I, and again, I wasn't even focused out on that. I was like, I just want the casting director to see that I can do more. Right. And then maybe right. she'll be like, Liz could be a stand-in. That'll be good experience for her. Mm -hmm. But I thought, I'm not going to get this part. There's no way. So I go in, I do this, the whole thing again. I leave. And then they call me back a third time. And at that point, I was like, well, hang on. Hang on. Am I really up for this? Like, am I really in the running for this? Like, don't tease me. Am I really? And they were like, yeah. And at that point, it was sort of told to me that um, the director really, really liked me. He was coming out to Philly to meet with everyone and he wanted to meet me. Um, there was a wow. little pushback from producers who were like, we should get a name because this was still going to theaters. And they thought, you know, a name will guarantee butts and seats. We should get a name. And he was like, I'm very impressed with what she did. I'm going to go meet her. And if she does it again, I'm going to cast her. That's how it was put to me. Shit. And I was wow. like, wow. So I went in a third time. And the third time was so funny because I got there. I did the same thing a third time. Same thing. So, and at this point, they had taken out the scene where I was being evicted. And they took out another scene that made a reference to the drug stuff. So I called my manager and I go, well, am I not doing it well enough or should I change what I'm doing? She said, go in there and do what you've been doing. Worry about that later. So, okay. So I went in and 
they were like, oh, just hang on five minutes. The director's on a phone call. We'll get you in five minutes. I said, okay. And I'm sobbing, by the way. I said, yeah, no problem. 45 minutes later, he comes out and I'm in a ball in the corner of the room. Just like, I've run out of tears at this point and I'm just kind of like dry crying, <laughs> which I've never experienced. I'm crying, but nothing's coming out of my eyes. Like, oh and, my um, God. I just remember his face. Like when he came out, he was like, like, oh my God, is she okay? You know, he has me come in the room and I go in, I do the thing again. And he, he shook my hand after it. And it was the first time I smiled. And he was like, oh my God, she smiles. And I was like, oh. <laughs> you know, and then I left. And then like the next day they called me and told me that I got the part. So, yeah. That is I, I forgot to say too, the other preparation, I always forget to mention this because, and I, I need to, I need to find this girl I need to find her email, but there was a girl, um, because again, my character's from Detroit and I, I'm actually from this Philly suburbs, if you couldn't tell from the, how I sound. Uh, so the dialogue was written in such a way that I was like, I'm going to need to change up my way of speaking just a bit. And I watched oh. this girl on YouTube, Bondi Blue, I think her name is Brittany, um, who reviews episodes of love and hip hop and i watched her review 16 hours of love and hip hop hollywood and just listened to her voice that's her voice that you hear in the movie that my speech patterns no. are based on her voice so yeah i i keep forgetting that i did that as well i had to make sure i could really say it she has a very fast way of talking and i loved it and i heard it and i was like that's that's a Molly. I haven't, we haven't decided how my character's name is pronounced because no one actually says it in the movie, but um, I decided that was her. I was like, that's what she sounds like. So that's, yeah, I got to email her so I can be like, thank you. <laughs> that's incredible. Oh my yeah. gosh. Oh, I wonder if someone's trying, if they're trying to play an Arizona part, if they're getting my voice just listening to this podcast over and over and they're like you scorpion no cactus yeah never rattlesnake. Know. i yeah she she had um and she's actually from i think new orleans but she has this wonderful way of speaking that i was like that's that's her i need to i need to do that and i mean now I'm into love and hip hop Hollywood. I've never seen an episode, but I, I care about it. I, I care about happens, what happens with Ray J and everybody because I was listening. Oh. <laughs> I was listening to her break it down. I mean, she would take extensive notes and she would sit there and be like, oh my God, y'all. Okay, let me tell you about what Ray J did now because you know, <laughs> I was watching this and I was just like, Ray J. And I was just like, she's amazing. <laughs> oh my god that well done well Thank you. done Thank you. oh my god i cannot wait to see this movie by the way did they have a date for when it's coming out on netflix <laughs> no, by the way they don't i don't have a date they they, they were like early 2021 for the longest time and then yeah. just the other day on facebook i saw someone messaged the director about a date and he just replied spring <laughs> So I don't have a date yet. All I know is it's coming out in the spring, but I, it's torture, man. I thought it was going to be coming out in January. And so oh, all man. last month I was like, <laughs> and then it didn't. So I just, it needs to come out. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, yes. I <laughs> Almost sounds like my mom when she was pregnant. It needs to come out. It needs to come out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but I'm super yeah, excited. I, I saw the trailer or or at least a, a snippet it's a clip. of it. Yeah, yeah I, there yeah. hasn't been an official trailer. Really, the pandemic really messed a lot of this up, a lot of the process mm. up. I mean, it really hit right when all of that would have been coming together, when a trailer would have been coming out. We were going to do a premiere where we all were riding down the red carpet on horses. Like it was a whole thing. Oh man. Yeah. Man. So I don't know whatever happened with the official trailer or what they're planning to do it, but that clip is hysterical, isn't it? 
Oh my gosh. It is. Yes. And it's for, I'll have a link in the show notes too, for people that want to see, but it's, um, I forgot the young child actor's name from stranger things. Caleb McLaughlin. Caleb McLaughlin yes. goes in Idris Elba's house and then he turns and sees a horse. And I, I see it. I was like, that's the ugliest roommate I've ever seen. And he, he's like, it's what's so this? Funny. It's a horse. And, and I, I did some research on it. And I guess urban cowboys was a, a real thing. Yes. I was going to say that story is a real, that was a Crazy. real story that happened um, to somebody that knew the, the writer director and was like, put that in the story. But yeah, that's why I'm excited really for people to see the film much more than people seeing what I do and, and what Caleb does. Cause I'm making my film debut. Caleb is making his film debut, our director. This is his first feature film. So it was really exciting for the three of us, but I'm really excited for people to do a deep dive when they see this, because um, they're going to realize these are real people. This is a real community. We shot at um, Fletcher street stables in Philadelphia. It's a real, uh, black cowboy community and they have been wow. around since the civil war they've been around forever um and not just in philly they're basically in major cities all throughout the u.s and they've been here forever it's just that right. we've been you know hollywood whitewashed out of the conversation of cowboy history um and so this is a this is a movie that really kind of reclaims that and lets people see this community, this real, we have real cowboys playing cowboys in our movie who are playing extras. One of the main parts, one of the main cowboys is one of the Fletcher Street cowboys. He's never been in a movie before and he was so good. And they were like, give him a main part. He's awesome. Um, yeah, so it's That's all amazing. historical base. It's like I, I'm I can't wait for people to be like, oh my god, this is this is in my backyard. Like I recognize that building. Holy shit, this is real, you know. Oh. I'm so excited for people to see that because yeah, they've been here forever and they so need our help because they are losing money like you wouldn't believe. But oh, that's why that scene is there because these these cowboys um, they really do care about these animals. And at times they've had stables closed and they have nowhere to bring these horses except into their own homes. And so oh that's, that's what you see in the movie. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Wow. Is there, by the way, with these real cowboys, is there any cowboy vernacular that they use like rootin' tootin', yeehaw? Howdy? Oh man. You know, I didn't, I didn't hear a lot of rootin' tootin'. That's really, that's a great question. The vernacular. I don't know. And unfortunately, my part, because I'm the one who kind of gets my kid into that yeah. world, um, I missed some of it. I, I kind of show up again at the end and I get some of it at the end. I uh -huh. don't want to give too much away, but, uh -huh. um, you know, I get some of that at the end. But when we were shooting, I didn't, get to hear a ton of it so if there was I didn't hear it but you know Idris and and Caleb and Method Man and Jarrell Jerome and also Lorraine Toussaint they were all you know between takes just sitting with the cowboys around a campfire talking freestyle rapping like it was they would know and I was just standing there like this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life like it was just like oh my god you know um we had a week of of night shoots poor Caleb had to be there every night I don't know how he did it from like wow 9 p.m to 9 a.m basically and um I was there for two of those nights and yeah both nights between takes they were just, they had a huge campfire going and they would just sit there shooting the breeze with these cowboys. It was the coolest, coolest thing. And it meant so much to, I know it meant so much to them. It meant so uh, much to us as, you know, as, you know, seeing these big stars here in our city, just hanging out, having a good time. It was awesome. That is so darn cool to be able yeah. to make a movie, to, to be able to star alongside all of those folks and yeah. um, make your big screen de debut there and well netflix debut um and it's that's so cool and then also to be able to pay homage to these urban cowboys that i didn't yes. even know exist and a lot of people probably didn't even know existed i that's didn't amazing. know they existed and i live here 
and they were like, you've seen the cowboys riding down the street. I was like, what, what are you talking about? What are you, what? And I, I, at my costume fitting, I said to the costume person, I was like, so this is a fantasy story, right? And she was like, uh, no. And that's when I did my deep dive. And I was like, I've lived here my entire life. And I had no idea. None. Wow. And can I was imagine? far from the only one. Say can that. You imagine, I, say I was yeah. just going to say, can you imagine you, the, the next Uber ride you call? Pulls up, clink, clack, 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 clack. Just a little horse with the right that, lift that's sign how on the it. movie got made because uh Ricky the Ricky Staub the director he was here he lived in Philly for a bit and he was in a cab and a cowboy rode by the cab and he was like what the I'm getting out here I'm gonna follow them followed oh. the guy and her was and it? was like please tell me your story and wrote it down Oh, I thought his Uber was the horse, the cowboy. No, he was in a he was in a cab and he rode by and was like, Dang. what? And was like, got out and followed the guy. I was like, Amazing. that's why I would want to work with him. Because oh. anybody who got out and was like, I got to write down this story and I have to turn it into a film. I'm like, yes, we're, yes. That's incredible. <laughs> oh, well. Liz, we're going to yes. just dive into, we're going to yes. finish it off with some advice, but this was fast. It's such an honor to have you. Oh my gosh. Story. I, I'm you. just rooting, tooting and happy. You're a... <laughs> yeehaw. Thank you. <laughs> but, yes. Yeehaw. I'm so excited and I really uh, appreciate it. This has been really, really fun. <laughs> this has been, this has been great. Now we're going to, we're going to dive into the advice just a little okay. bit before we get into it. We've got inspirational quotes. I like inspirational okay. quotes to help center me maintain yes. focus and inspire me so that i can go on and do bigger and better things i like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that help them through their dark days there's you know i i'm not like a huge quote person but there was one i'm gonna see if i can find it um because it was my senior quote in high school and I thought it was so good, but I need to, I need to think about what it. You're all good. We'll, we'll, we'll cut this part out in post too. Yeah. Like, I'm like, you know what oh, I just man. came up with? <laughs> it's okay. I am asking you on the spot too. So no, no, like, no. No preparation. It's, oh man. Well. It was, it was such a great, I'm going to paraphrase it while I'm looking for it, but it just, it basically was like, um, you know, if you want to get anywhere on life in life, you have to realize like talent is not enough. It's you have to also have the hard work. You have to also have the the determination. You also have to have the drive. Um, and only with those things will talent then carry you to success. But I'm horribly paraphrasing that uh, that phrase, but. I can't oh, find it. You know what? I'm it. inspired. I'm inspired. That's a beautiful <laughs> quote. It's a beautiful yeah, paraphrase. It's a, it's a great quote. I want to say it was like Thomas Edison or maybe Thomas Jefferson or something, but it basically, yeah, it was basically like uh, success is, is a multi-step thing. And, you know, it's not just about talent. It's not just about hard work. It's not just about luck. It's about all these things together and only together will they propel you to success. But it's just a, I like the quote because, um, especially when it comes to acting, I think a lot of, because I teach acting as well. So I teach young actors and I think a lot of young actors, especially really coast on their talent Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like when I went to college, it was like, we're all talented. We all had to audition to get here. You're all talented. Talent is not enough to carry you to success. You're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to, you know, some, in some cases, you're going to have to be in the right place at the right time. You're going to have to go through all the experiences and all of that stuff. And only through that will you get to the success that you're seeking. So, nice. Nice. Yeah. So you put them all on probation and say... 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it makes you work hard. I think it's great. I think it's a great strategy. It worked. Say, same with me. Say, I, that's what I need to be able to get that. If I'm saying, hey, Stefan, you're the greatest podcaster in the world. I'd just be sitting back, not preparing, doing any research. But yeah. Stefan, you're on probation. We're almost going to kick you off Spotify because you suck so bad. <laughs> I got to put in that work. Got to stay on Spotify. Exactly. But, you can't just coast. You got to work. You got to work. Yes, yes, exactly. So that's a beautiful quote. I'm going to make you feel better with a really bad quote that I have. It's actually <laughs> not by any person whatsoever. It's by a robot. Okay. There are, there are robots out there that are making quotes. And this hey, specific man. robot, it's called Inspirobot. And so what it does is it uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to man or Wu Man and just mashes them together for a beautiful quote. I like that. So <laughs> we'll try and we'll try and figure out. I I thought I spoke in Spyrobot fluently, but we'll try and figure out if this means anything to us. Okay. It usually comes with a beautiful picture too. If you go to inspirobot.me, you just click and it generates an, a quote for you. But okay. this week, this week Inspirobot says, eat dolphins and keep being a sweetheart. Hmm. Uh. <laughs> All right, so let's break it down. Eat dolphins. Eat I don't know. Dolphins. If... I feel like that's a metaphor. I'm gonna God, go with I that's a so. metaphor. I think metaphorically eat dolphins. What that means is consume the vibrant energy of such a beautiful exuberant animal and take that energy into the second half of the quote which was what keep being a sweetheart oh because dolphins are very sweet sweet tempered sweet natured so i think it's really i think it's a metaphor being like consume that energy as the dolphin would because they have a vibrant friendly energy and use that to keep being friendly to all <laughs> liz i i love the positivity that emanates from you and your soul because i was thinking that inspired by was saying <laughs> dolphins are a-holes dolphins are jerks did they don't laugh like, ha, ha, ha. They laugh like, eh, 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 you suck. Eh. So I thought they don't have any predators. There are so many. They're so smart. I think they might be smarter than humans. So if we eat them, maybe we will become intelligent like them. And maybe we'll keep them under control and be like, you know what? You better watch out because we'll eat you. So that's that's where I went. So I we went kind of different ways, but I like yours better. So let's stick with that. <laughs> Dolphins is a metaphor. <laughs> That's really dark, Seven. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in my house for a long time. Oh. I, uh, yeah, I, I'm not a fan you? of dolphins, apparently. Who hurt no. you, Stefan? Who hurt it was you? a dolphin at SeaWorld, okay? <laughs> uh, John Ray the dolphin. He was a jerk. Oh, man. And it was amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, he that splashed me. And then I like that. He, yeah, he splashed me and I was like, <laughs> so I didn't like it. Everybody laughed at me. Still thinking about it. So I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to put you on my plate one of these days, buddy. Oh no. And, uh, so I'm that really. Put you on my plate. <laughs> I, see, like, I feel like, like dolphins even taste good though. Um, like, do we eat dolphins? I feel like no. No, I don't yeah. think we do. And I don't know who decided like, who <laughs> was like, you know what? This is okay to eat. Cats, no. Cows, yes. Because Cats and dogs, you're gonna get them a name to. Dolphins, I, no. It's true. I don't I don't understand the distinction. I just I just assume that cats taste bad. Mm. But I don't know why I assume that. I don't know. I, I feel like dolphins probably don't taste bad, but I could never eat one. I would just feel, I'd be like, it's flipper. But I have no problem eating other meat. Like, I'm fine with it. I don't know. I don't know. I think I think it's because there's a name associated to it. Yeah. Once you got flipper, that's you got how flipper, it works. But the, I eat 
bacon and I will jokingly say to my daughter like here goes babe like I mean I, <laughs> like I mean with it sometimes I don't know I feel like it's worse with a dolphin that's very hypocritical and I'm very sorry <laughs> that's you know what there are no dolphins that listen to this podcast so I know, or pigs I know. okay all so. the dolphin lovers no I'm not gonna eat one so I I would try it I don't I don't have any emotional connection to dolphins and I think they are jerks. So <laughs> they are jerks. <laughs> they splashed me and laughed at it. There's... They rescue humans though. I, I've read this. That oh, they like they? rescue herman humans from like aggressive whales and sharks and things like that. So hmm. I do okay. feel like I, I I feel like I like them because of that. And also because okay. they're apparently they're very smart. So I don't know, okay. but I you know fair. Fair. I don't know. I guess maybe I would if I don't know. If I was like on an island and starving and you know, maybe. And a dolphin just flopped onto the beach. I mean, like, if I come here, you know, you're, if it was dead mind. and I was like, I'm hungry, there's blubber or something. I don't know. Oh god. Oh my okay. god. If I was starving <laughs> on the beach in an island, I would eat my wife practically. Like not kill her, but just the finger. Like, <laughs> love you, man. Nobody's safe. Nobody's safe. Run. <laughs> <laughs> when my tummy starts to grumble, yeah, nothing is yeah. safe. Oh, it's all fair oh, game. Oh, man. All right. I'm never getting on a, a boat with you because we get somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and we get somewhere. Everybody listening, if I'm ever on a boat with Stefan and I don't make it back, y'all know what happened. <laughs> don't worry you'd be the he last thing me. i would i'd make sure to eat the dolphins first so that's the, definitely <laughs> we're not on good ground dolphins thank you but i appreciate that I, I absolutely and you know what now i feel nice and inspired so i feel like we're ready to go into these questions yes. that we'll just okay i'm ready plow through. all right so we've got this first one it says uh it was found on reddit and it says stepmom is an amazing prankster payback Whenever my partner's dad and stepmom come for a visit, we always find random stuff all over the house. She hid a heap of unicorn rubber ducks all over the place. We were finding them a week later. Then her next visit, she had hid an inflatable unicorn ring toss head in the yard. Then the next visit managed to sneak a fake potted plant in. It's a watermelon pot. We visited them just a few days ago and reversing out the driveway found a watermelon rubber duck on the back of the car. She seems to go in themes. I'm expecting something else watermelon themed coming yeah, next. I have a large box full of at least a hundred Lion King Ushis that I got from a Woolsworth promotion. Aussies will understand and I've already hidden six of them in her house in the last visit and then plan to hide more next week but I don't know if it's big enough suggestions mm. I don't know what that Lion King thing is because if I knew I would be like here's where you need to put it but Ooh. Ooh. God, I'm not like a prank the only the only like prank I ever did because I heard it in a book and I thought it was funny it was like this guy knew his sister hated finding loose change in his house. So like he stayed with her and then like before he left, he spread like $30 worth of change in nickels and pennies around her house. And I did that to my sister in like $5 of change in like pennies and nickels and just took a jar and sprinkled them all over her house. She was very upset. I would do something like that. Oh, I like that. I was going to say these pranks are way too fun. I like, know. I was like, you got to be, you got to be obnoxious about it. That's the thing. Or if Somebody's... you're not going to do change, sprinkle something else around her house. That would be really annoying. Like, I don't know, a powder that smells really bad, like garlic. I'm oh, really that's bad. A that's a good mean. idea. Yeah. And be like, oh, yeah. unicorn toots all over the place. Keep it on that's theme with the unicorn. That's and what I'm saying. The foul stench can be guised as a prank. I love it. That's great. It's all over the house. <laughs> Under, yeah, on her sheets, just douse yeah. it with garlic. Under the mattress so she can't identify where it is. Under, like, like between, like, sofa cushions. Put it and, like, in the under vent. Under chair cushions. Yeah. In the lighting fixtures, just a sprinkle. <laughs> you don't want to start a fire. Just a sprinkle. Uh, if she's like, 
if they're liquor drinkers, maybe just a sprinkle in the whiskey. Oh, nothing better than garlic infused whiskey. Mm. Mm. I love Terrible. I love that. And she Terrible. will never prank you again. She might not yeah. even talk to you again. That's beautiful. Or you could do, yeah, you could do like the whole, you know, the movie Amelie where she was like pl- uh, pranking the neighbor. She kind of, uh, she kept taking his slippers and making them a size smaller and smaller. So like I would take some of her like jackets or shirts or whatever and buy her size smaller and smaller. Oh, I like that. Make her think I she's like going that. nuts. Oh my gosh. Oh, and then she'll <laughs> go on a crazy diet. Oh we took it to a whole different this level. Is... She's like, tell me where to leave the rubber ducks. And I'm like, garlic like her whiskey, bitch. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, mess with her mind. Get in there. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> we we should never do pranks. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. I'm so Beautiful. sorry, you guys. I'm Inspire really bots fault. <laughs> All right, we've got our last <laughs> question, mm-hmm. and then it's end of podcast. It says, 18, and I have so much white hair. I have a lot of white hair for an 18-year-old. Not just a few strands, but a lot. My first white strand was when I was four. Is there mm. any way to naturally get rid of it? Is this a man or a woman asking? Do we know? Oh, good question. Because honestly, if it was a woman, I'm going to answer from the woman's perspective because I'm not a guy and you can, you can handle the guy's perspective. But yeah, listen, I found my first gray hair in the center of the back of my head when I was in high school. Cause I used to wear my head shaved like real okay. short. So nice. one grew and everyone saw it. They were like, Whoa, you know, um, and then my mom plucked it out. But honestly, if it was, if it was a woman, I wouldn't change it at all. I would rock the hell out of some white hair and I would like make my whole head white or silver or I would put in some like extra extensions that were white. I would rock that so much because here's the thing. We as a society, we keep we keep doing this thing where we we look at our elders and we look down on them and then anyone that shows any sign of aging whether it's wrinkles or gray or white hair, we're like, oh, you got to change that. And if this is a woman asking the question, I would say embrace that. It is, there is nothing more gorgeous to me than a woman, especially if it's a young woman, embracing the natural gray and white. My sister, one of my older sisters who's Caucasian, she has blonde hair, but at the temples, ever since she was in high school, it's so bright, it's white. And I love it. When she puts her hair back in a French braid, love it it's like highlights so um i would say if it's a girl don't change it rock it shave your head down so you could like highlight it or something highlight that white or like i don't know but show it off i think it's awesome now for a guy i don't know that might be different i would say change it as soon as possible (laughs) because you are gonna get made fun of no I, I was going to say the exact same thing. Yeah. Keep it. I feel, dude, if I had white hair, I would feel so badass. Yo, I got this, oh, chestnut. Yeah. It is rad. My, my best friend, I've known my two best friends since kindergarten. We met in kindergarten. So we're going on over 30 years. I'm not going to say how old I am. But um, one of my best friends, she's half Asian, and she has this gorgeous, long dark hair and she's always had hair like that it's like down to her Mm. butt i saw her recently she has it is streaked all throughout with white and gray and she's in her 30s so it looks very striking but i absolutely love it she looks so punk and so cool and she loves it too she's like i thought it would bother me and now i'm just like this is so cool like i you know, like, I love it. I think she looks so awesome. So I would, I would embrace it, man. Love I, your hair. I totally agree. Just be, be great. If you're a guy, be grateful. You have any hair at all. You My dad be, went bald at bald. 20. So, you know, same, yeah. same. My yeah. dad did too. And so I, I'm so grateful for these locks of. You have a nice chestnut. hair. Yeah. Oh. I, I am follically blessed and i am thankful every day i'm in especially in the pandemic i'm growing it out and yes. i've got 
I've got uh, my little white patch right there. One little patch. That's so awesome. One little patch, and I'm yeah. so proud. I'm so proud. I love it. So, bro. It's cool. I or say sis, rock that out. Whatever gray. I don't have grays yet which yeah. is kind of great, but it's also kind of like when they come, I'm not going to, I plan not to do anything about them. It's yes. going to be interesting in this industry because they always kind of have you try to hide a bit. I mean, you know, like oh, this is, yeah. this is, this is the result of, I didn't wash my hair today. This is not mine. Uh, but yeah, no, this is a result of, I haven't washed my hair today. And when I do that tomorrow, it'll be nice and short, but Boy, nice. you better believe when I get the grays, I'm gonna because my hair isn't really short, close to my scalp. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So when you get the grays, you'll see it. So I'll be like, "Nice, show goes. them off, show them <laughs> off." It's it's a sign of uh, it's oh, I love, white hair is the best. So yes, I, it's it's get, distinctive, beautiful. Look at Judy Dench. I think she's one of the most oh. gorgeous. Helen Mirren, like these are some of the most gorgeous women in the world, and they have completely white and gray hair. And I just am like. Exactly. Hope I look it's, that good. <laughs> yeah. You know? Absolutely. That's what that's what we all hope for. That we just look yes. great in great in gray. That's yes. how it is. Yes. Oh, so embrace it, whoever you are. Exactly. Uh well, Liz, <laughs> thank you so much for joining. Absolutely. Talking about yourself, giving advice. It was awesome. I wanted to ask, where can people find you? What have you got going on? What would you like to plug? You rip. can find me on Facebook under Liz Priestley. That's my only social media. I don't do the other ones because I just, I'm so boring. Um, but Facebook and also, nice. I guess, IMDb. But really, you know, the pandemic slowed a lot of things down. So I'm really, I'm auditioning my butt off and we'll see if anything happens with those. But I'm also writing a lot. Um I do have a short film that I just completed and the editing has just come back. So I will probably be posting that uh, somewhere very soon, um, either on, it will be on my Facebook page, but also probably on YouTube um, that I wrote and starred in. So oh. that's coming out and I have a couple others that I'm working on. So yeah, so that's what I'm working on. Yeah, the I have a short film called The Riders that will be coming out in a few weeks. So. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, um, if I get this episode might come out in a couple weeks. So if it comes out in time, I'll have the link in the show. Oh, yay, notes cool. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, well, it was <laughs> such a pleasure. I'm pleased as punch to have met you and oh, learned about thank you. And, you. And to know that you wouldn't need a dolphin, so I can. And uh, <laughs> if we ever get stranded. <laughs> <laughs> and uh no it was a great time Liz <laughs> no dolphin eating <laughs> <laughs> yes I will leave the dolphin eating to you I'll just sing about it oh, I'll just stand God. behind you and be like Steph is eating a dolphin <laughs> and I'm crying on the inside <laughs> Oh man. Oh well. Thank oh, you thank so you much. Thank you so much, Stephen. This was oh. really, really fun. I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. My pleasure. You're welcome back anytime. So if you've got thank ever you. got anything else to promote, give me a call, an email, whatever, and uh, you know, we'll make it happen. So thank you so right. much. I appreciate you. Awesome. Likewise. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. Bye. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye.